Hi, so today I want to show you how you can make uh, leather minimalist wallets like the ones pictured here. Now this is uh, based on a pattern and instructions that I sell in my Etsy shop. Uh, so in the instructions there are pictures and I will show you basically how you can uh, make this item. But uh, this video will also take you through the entire process. Uh, so if you have any questions then hopefully I will answer them here. Now this leather item is quite simple to make and you don't need to know that much. Uh, but there are a few things you might want to consider, so hopefully I will address those in this video. Uh, now, the pattern comes in 12 different variations. Here you have number 1, 2 and 3. Here you have 4, 5 and 6. Here's 7, 8 and 9. And finally 10, 11 and 12. Now, this is a really good... Um, good pattern. I'm quite proud of it because you can vary this in many different ways. Uh, first off, you have the 12 different patterns. Uh, also, you can decide on a few different design uh, choices of your own. So, for example, if we have a look at these example wallets, <coughs> this is the pattern normally that, uh, that I use, and that's this one. This is number one. So, first off, you need to decide what way you want the uh, uh, the slant to be. So for example, if you put the pattern on the leather like it is uh, here, like that, uh, you are going to get this wallet. Uh, because you can also choose to actually put the pattern like this or on the flesh side of the leather. Because then you will have the slant going this way. So basically, you can choose if you want a wallet that looks like this, like this. You can also decide if you want the rounded bottoms or the straight ones. So there are many variations you can choose in this, uh, in this pattern pack. Uh, not only the 12 uh, different designs, but also a few smaller choices as well. So, uh, quite nice. You will most likely uh, be able to build something that you like. And of course, when you factor in uh, considerations like uh, the color of the leather, the kind of thread that you want, uh, most likely you can build a wallet that anyone would like. So, I'll take you through the entire process of making a wallet like this one. And um, let's get started. Okay then, let's start making this. So. First off, what I do when I mark this is I don't mark the entire thing because it takes a lot of time and um, many times you don't really need to. Also, when you cut it out, it is faster basically to just cut it based on a few points. So I'll show you where I mark this. Now, I start off uh, up here because in the slant, just one mark over here then one down there also. Since I also want to see where the stitching line ends up here, I'm going to mark it one place, just one small hole over there and one directly below it because when we cut here, uh, we're most likely going to make this hole disappear and you know cut it off. So we want to mark it at least a few millimeters down here as well. There we go. Now, here at the bottom also. Uh, if you want to, you can mark off the rounded corners right away, but I, um, I have a tendency to basically just cut them off later on because it is easier. So one hole down there. Also, because this is the stitch stitching line, I want one hole here and one hole here because then I can more easily uh, make this curve in the stitching line later on. I also want to mark where the stitching line ends. There we go. <coughs> Here I also want to mark because I want to know where uh, the, uh, the corner is going to be. And where that corner starts. And here where that corner starts. Stitching line. Stitching line again, and there also. 
and there one more where the stitching line ends where this one ends down here down there also in this corner where this stitch, stitching line ends this will actually just continue on but I'll mark it anyways now this corner also and that small corner up here and now I'll mark this There we go. Uh, it may look like there's a lot of just small holes now. Uh, so if you want to, if you don't really know, uh, or if you haven't done this before, you might want to mark everything. This is how I do it, and it's just a good tip, because it actually makes things go faster. Now all you need to know is that you are going to cut uh, based on the outermost holes. So here, to here, up to there, all the way down here and uh, down there. The rest is going to be clearer when we actually start building this. You can also just always have a look at the pattern uh, if you want to. So now we're going to cut this out and then it will st start to actually look like a wallet. Just a quick tip. When you're cutting this out, uh, what I do is I take a metal roller and I align the holes like this and then push it down and simply cut. Now what you don't want to do is cut with the leather, the leather that you're actually going to use. You don't want to cut on the inside of that. So for example here I want this piece to be cut off so I'm cutting here because if you were to mess up and cut into the leather that you're going to use well you have ruined the project. So there is no really need to, um, to risk it. So, for example, in this case, I'll align the holes like this. You don't want to cut like this, because then it is, first off, quite difficult, because you don't really have that much leather to uh, lean the, the ruler on. Also, like I said before, if you're cutting like this, you have ruined the wallet. So you don't want to do that. Now it basically looks a bit more like uh, the wallet that we're going to make. Uh, to make things a bit easier for you, if you are a bit confused and if you didn't mark everything right away, uh, you can mark the stitching lines now just to make sure that you are in the right place. So take a small ruler and align the holes that you made before and just make a quick line with your scratch all so that you can see where you're going to make the st stitching holes later on. There we go. If you want to, you can also mark these down here. Uh, I tend to use a, uh, a compass for this, but you can do it like this as well. <coughs> if you're not really sure, have a look at the pattern when you do this to make sure that you're doing everything the, uh, on the proper place, if there are too many holes for you. There we go. Now, this is a bit more clear uh, as to what is going to happen. Uh, what we want to do now is uh, also mark out where we're going to cut the soon-to-be corners here and here as well. Uh, this corner you don't really need to bother because that is going to be inside the wallet. It is going to be folded like this. This is going to be the back of it. And that is going to be the front. So, already now, we can start to see how this is going to look. Now, <coughs> when I make these uh, small corners, uh, I often use a small coin to just mark around them. So then that is um, 
it's, it's a bit easier. Also, when you can, of course, line this, cut everything out, and just mark them like that. Um, but I want the corners to be all the same size. Uh, of course, they are on the pattern. But I just tend to do this because it is a bit easier. So find a coin or something else that is round and is sort of the same size as the uh, the pattern. Now this one is okay, so I'll use this one. Uh, it isn't really that big of a difference if you have a coin that is slightly larger uh, because it will work out anyways. I've used larger ones in the past and they work just fine. So what you want to do is align the lines that you just made, for example, here and here, so the, the corner meets the coin. And then you can just draw a circle around it and you have a mark for where you're going to cut. So we'll do that on this corner. Line it and just with your scratch all mark the corner and there you go. You can of course have a, um, a knife and cut it off straight away uh, but I really want to double check and see if I made any mistakes so I'll just mark it with my scratch all and then I'll cut it off later on. So this corner is the only one that you're going to mark and cut now because later on when we have stitched it together we are going to cut the rest along this corner. So that is going to make the, um, the corners to be more flush because if, <coughs> if you didn't cut this, uh, um, uh, if you cut them all out, it could be, for example, that they're not, com they're not completely flush and then it will be difficult to fix it. You can, but it's more difficult. So it's easier to just mark this corner and then see, for example, that when we have everything glued up and stitched together, you can then cut off this corner with this corner as uh, a guiding line, basically. So, you don't need to cut this corner here. You can if you want to. This one, however, we need to prepare now and cut it off. So, you can take your coin, match it up with this hole and the bottom of the leather and mark it. Then do the same on the other side. There we go. So now we're going to cut off this small piece and this corner. Now, when I cut off the corners, I don't do it in just one straight cut because I don't really trust myself that much. So instead, what I do is I cut it off one small piece at a time because if you cut off many small pieces, they actually will turn out round in the end. So just align the knife with the edge and cut it off one small piece at a time. There we go. Looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to take this and sand it down just a bit to make it even uh, more flush, but it is pretty good as it is. Now you can also see that the coin also worked out just fine here when we are going to, uh, where we're going to add the stitching line. You can just make a bit of a stronger mark if you want to. So for <clears throat> this piece right here that we're going to cut out, you can do the same thing if you want to. You can just make one cut here and then keep cutting like this if you want to. That works just fine also. So when you have cut off this corner, cut out this piece as well. Now I finished cutting out the, the bottom piece and the uh, 
the round part up here that you're going to use to more easily get your cards out. Now don't worry if you are not completely uh, happy with the cutting. I'm not in this case. Uh, it is a bit wonky and I, um, and I, if you hold the knife not completely straight but you put it off to either side, uh, your cut is not going to be that great. Uh, now this doesn't really matter. Many times you can fix this later on. For example, I'm going to take a small Dremel and sand out to make this completely flush. Uh, leather is a great material and it is, it is quite forgiving um, if you know how to fix things. So don't worry too much about that. Also, down here, uh, you are going to sand off this edge later on. So if it isn't, if it isn't completely perfect, don't worry about it. It is, it is going to be fine in the end. Now, it is, going, it is starting to look like a, a wallet now. So it is going to be folded like this and then around like that. Uh, afterwards, you're then going to press it down and it will of course take a much better shape. It will look like this in the end. <coughs> but if you want to, you can double check things now to make sure that they are aligned. And also it is quite fun to see a project come together. So if you want to, you can press down on the leather a bit. And if you did things correctly, now this uh, corner here should be right in the middle of where this leather is and it looks pretty good this is going to be folded over and then the stitching lines are going to meet and it is going to be put together like this already it looks pretty okay now what we want to do now <coughs> is um, bevel off this edge up here, clean up this cut, bevel here and burnish and bevel along this line here. So the top and the left side we need to bevel and burnish because later on when we are going to glue it together we don't really have the space, we can't really burnish this edge. When I do this, I use a number one uh, beveler. Many people think that uh, leather of this thickness should uh, require a number two beveler. Uh, I don't think so. I think number one takes off just enough to make a nice rounded edge. Otherwise, uh, I think it becomes a bit too pointed, the edge, and it needs to be squashed down and the edge doesn't look that good. I think number one is uh, just fine. If you want to use a number two, then you do that. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as you are happy with the project in the end. Now I have already beveled off this side in the uh, rounded part. Uh, you also want to bevel off the rest of the top part. Now when it comes to this side, uh, you want to be a bit too careful and think about it a bit. Because if you bevel off on both the flesh side and the grain side, uh, the corner is going to be quite, or the edge is going to be quite round. And when you then fold it together, you're going to have a more pronounced edge here. Uh, what I have done in the past is I only bevel off on the grain side, because then the, um, this edge is going to lie down a bit more snugly on the uh, other side of leather of the, of the leather, uh, but if you want to do both sides, that's okay. So, for example, here you can see that it is quite uh, a snug fit between these two layers, and uh, I just bevel off the top side because then this profile is going to be a bit uh, well more rounded. Otherwise, there's going to be a stronger uh, gap here and between the, la the layers. You decide what you want to do. I recommend only beveling off this side. <coughs> also, uh, don't go too far down because we're going to bevel off this later on and we want to use this corner as a guide when we cut off this piece right here. So only bevel down to about here because then it is going to be easier for you to cut later on. Here we go. 
Also make sure that you do the flesh side as well. And I have already done that on this side. Another tip that you might want to use uh, is if you bevel off a bit more on this side right here, which is going to be inside of the wallet. So here, for example, it might be easier for you to fold everything closed. And it doesn't really matter if that uh, edge is a bit shorter because it is going to be hidden anyways. So if you want to, you can bevel off once or twice on this side and of course on the flash side as well. Uh, what you might want to consider though is that it is going to be seen here. So if you bevel off and cut off too much, you're going to have a hole there. Um, it is not big of a detail, but sometimes those matter as well. So make sure that you don't cut off too much or you're going to have a hole here. But once or twice shouldn't matter that much. It could also make it easier to fold everything closed. So once, twice, same thing on this side. Because now this edge is a bit more rounded and it is going to fit into this fold more snugly and uh, it is going to look a bit better. So the details matter. Uh, if you think about this stuff, it is going to uh, uh, make the wallet look that much nicer in the end. There we go. Now, of course, we need to burnish the top and uh, this part as well. Now, the way I burnish my edges is actually quite simple. Um, you need a few things. Q-tip, water, burnisher, and in the end, I also use some token only. Now, I'm not going to use this right now because I'm just going to show you how I burnish the edges uh, with just the water. And then I'm going to dye this uh, dark brown so that it looks like this wallet here. Uh, before that though, we want to punch the stitching lines because then the dye can penetrate into those as well. So we don't have uh, stitching holes with a lighter leather and a dark outside. So I'll just show you how to burnish the edges uh, because that is going to be just as fine after we have, um, after we've dyed it as well. But after it is dyed, I'll apply the token only to just make sure that everything looks really nice. So Q-tip. Soak it in water, just a bit, not too much, just so that it is quite wet, but you don't want it to be dripping because then you might oversaturate the leather, which is going to make it a bit squishy. Now, just... Stroke on the water to just make it the leather a bit darker, not too much, but a bit damp, like that. And then, Take a burnisher, now you can use a hand burnisher like this, it is, they are totally fine, they're very cheap also. Um, but I use a, a Coco Bolo burnisher also that I have mounted to my, uh, my drill press, uh, which is very nice. It is quite fast, it does the, well, the grunt work basically, but I always finish with this one because then I can have a look and go over the details uh, with this small hand burnisher. I bought this many years ago, you can see how, uh, how well used it is. It works just fine anyways. So find the correct size of the hole and uh, just go at it. You don't need to press down too much because you're just going to flatten down the fibers of the, le the leather so that they uh, become smoother basically. So don't push down too much. Go over it a few times and you can already see that it is becoming to, uh, becoming much shinier and that is just what we're looking for. Now, since the leather is wet, this dark color will mostly um, go away later on when it has dried. 
But since I'm going to dye this, it doesn't really matter anyways. Now, this is already much nicer than the, the rough edges up here. Um, I'll see if we can get some focus. And much shinier. It will look excellent when we have applied this hook and only as well. You don't need to do much more than this. If you're using crappy leather uh, that is very fuzzy, uh, you can see that I'm using uh, quite good quality leather because there's no irregularities on, uh, on the flesh side. I can show you some crappy leather. Now, this leather is quite different. Uh, it is not as compressed as this. And when you bend it, the fibers actually stand out. Uh, I think you can see it over here. Uh, now, this leather is not as nice. It is cheaper and it is going to be much worse and much more difficult to, um, to bevel and burnish because it is looser, basically. So high quality leather, uh, it really makes a big difference when you are making these leather items because the end result is much nicer and it is so much easier to work with. Had this been a bit fuzzy, I would also have taken 1000, 2000 grit sandpaper to this and just uh, stroked it a few times, sanded down the, the worst of the, the roughness. But I don't need to do that here because this is very smooth as I touch it. You can, of course, if you want to, but you don't really need to. So just go over the rest, do the same, and do the same here. Uh, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to punch the stitching holes all the way around, uh, and then I'm going to dye this. Now it is time to mark the stitching holes. Uh, I use a number four pricking iron because it has four millimeters between the prongs, and uh, on a small leather item as this, I think that is just fine. Now, there are a few things you want to consider when you uh, punch the, the stitching holes. Uh, first off, on this side up here, what you want to do is align it so that you have one prong above outside of the leather. Because if you're just winging it, you might have your first hole a bit too far down and it's going to look a bit silly because you have a long distance up here. Uh, so. Also, you might be a, be a bit too close and you cut the edge of the leather, which you don't want. So instead, mark off with just one prong above here, and then you can punch away. Now make sure when you do this, when you punch the holes that you are perfectly aligned so that you're not angled to the left or to the right, because then the holes on the other side are not going to be perfectly aligned and it is going to be more difficult to, uh, to sew everything together. So you want to be as precise as you can with this. Now, for the holes that are going to be here, these two, because you have uh, two st stitching lines here, one here and one here, you want to make sure that you start on, in the same place and that you have the same amount of holes because they are going to match up later on. So in the hole that you made before, you want to have your first prong and then align it with the rest of the line. And then you can do the same on the other side. So make sure that you don't start in different ways because then the holes are not going to be aligned and it's going to look a bit off. So once you've done that, you can just punch the holes and um, then we can, or I can dye the leather. Uh, when it comes to this part down here, uh, you can just continue uh, with the stitching line all the way out in the end because uh, this uh, part is not going to be shown anyways and we're going to stitch through all the way anyways. So once you are in the corner you can just continue this line but the, these two should stop where they are right now. There's one more tip I would like to offer you. Uh, once you've started off punching holes, uh, take the first one or two prongs and put them in the same hole as you just cut or just punched because then it is much easier to just continue aligning with the same line. So one or two holes that you just had and put them in and then you keep punching. Just a small tip to make sure that you keep everything uh, perfectly aligned and with the same distance. Once you get to the corner you want to use a two prong stitch and chisel and just keep going and like we did before take 
one prong in the same hole that you just punched and align it along the hole. Then you just keep going like that until you are all the way around. And then you can just keep going with the uh, larger chisel. So now, once the stitching holes are punched, it is really starting to look like a wallet. Now, you can now double check to see if everything is where it's supposed to be. Uh, but don't be alarmed uh, if uh, it doesn't look perfect as it is. Uh, because it isn't completely flat and you can make it become more flat in many different ways. If you just push it down with your fingers, it looks pretty okay. I don't like this part because that hole uh, is a bit too big uh, for my taste. Now it is going to look much better once we sew this closed, but you can, for example, massage the, the folds like this if you want to. And this is easier to do if the leather is a bit wet. So you can either wet the entire thing or you can just take a q-tip with water like we had before and wet down these folds this one and that one and then you can massage it into the same or into the shape that it's going to be uh, but also don't be alarmed if not everything is perfectly aligned like i said uh, for example if you have more holes on this side uh, than for example that side uh, it doesn't matter you can still fix it you can also uh, always in the last hole, for example, if everything has gone straight before, you can just then take the final stitch and you put it in the same hole that you had before. So everything can be fixed. Don't worry about that. Uh, also, if it doesn't look like this corner is completely uh, straight, then you can always fix that in the end. In most cases, this is going to fix itself once we have glued it and sewed it shut and once it is completely flat but if it doesn't we're still going to take a piece of sandpaper to this edge and make sure that it is completely flush in the end so don't be alarmed uh, it is still fixable and this is many times what it looks like because certain leathers behave in different ways it also depends on the thickness of the leather that you have so right now what i'm going to do is dye this leather into the dark brown color that the customer wanted and i'm also going to apply my maker's mark to the front and there we go nice dark brown color and the maker's mark is applied now as well now before we glue this closed and stitch it shut we want to remember that we are going to burnish this top edge and this side as well so because this is still a bit damp from uh, the dyeing process. It is dry, but still a bit damp. I can feel that it's a bit cold. Uh, just take a burnisher and go once over uh, the top edge as well, just to flatten down those fibers and give it a nice shine. Because once you have wetted the leather, uh, the fibers, they move a bit and can stand up. So you want to just give it a, a pass with the burnisher as well. Now, this is already quite shiny and very smooth when I touch it, but it is going to look even better uh, with the, uh, the gum tragacanth, the tokenoli, and it is going to, most importantly, last longer than just um, burnishing without the, uh, the tokenoli. So just go over this quite quickly, because you can see the difference from this side that I have just burnished, and this side it is uh, not as shiny as this side so just going over once more can really make a big difference and we really do like the details now the edges are what I think uh, can actually take the most time and it is a bit tedious to just rub down and burnish the edges but the result is going to be so much better if you really take care of your edges so um, take that extra time the end result is going to be much better now, this is excellent as it is I could leave it but I'm not going to because I want it to be able to last for a very long time <clears throat> now on this side where we didn't bevel off the flesh side on the inside uh, you can just take the uh, the flat portion of your burnisher and don't push down too much just burnish it like this <coughs> because then we don't really get that curve that we want 
on the top part. Now don't push too hard because then you're going to mushroom down the edge. You don't want that. Now this side is still going to be quite flat so that it lies down nicely and closely with the other side of the leather. Uh, but not really that rounded. No. Very nice, very nice edges. Now we're going to apply the token only. So this is basically gum tracker cans. Uh, this is bought in Japan. I bought it there last summer when I was there. Now you can take a Q-tip for example and just take some of the tokenoli and um, apply just a thin layer on top of the edge and then burnish it. When you apply the tokenoli or gum tracker cans or whatever you use, you really want to make sure that none of it gets onto this side of the leather. Uh, you can wipe it off right away, but you can also just wet your finger and wipe it off later on. You can do that, but uh, it can stick. Uh, especially if it is leather that isn't dyed, then it is quite difficult to get it off. So make sure that you are careful when applying this and um, you don't need that much. In the beginning, I used way more than I do now and the results are the same. It is just less messy. Instead of a Q-tip, you can also just take some on your finger and lightly rub it down the, uh, the top part of the leather. Now wipe off any that come to the side. Like I say, you don't need that much. And wipe it that down, there we go. Now just so that it feels a bit shiny, now take your burnisher again and make sure that if you have too much, you wipe it off as you go because uh, otherwise it's going to be a bit messy on this side and we don't want that. We want nice clean edges. Just a few passes. Now we can see we have some that we can remove. Just do that with your finger and keep going. Like we said before, uh, this can be the most tedious part but it is also, in a way, I think, the most rewarding because if you have nice, clean edges that even have a sort of a mirror shine to them, um, the uh, end result and the, the finished item will look much better than if you had skimped and um, not really treated your edges nicely. There we go, that's beautiful. None are on the side. Now you can also take a, a piece of cloth and polish this even more if you want to, just to, <coughs> to make it shine a bit more. Uh, we don't really need to here. The, the result is, is excellent. So just continue doing uh, what you just did. Take some on your finger, not too much, and just gently apply it on the edge. Now this is, I think, this is a bit too much. So you can just take your hand and rub off the excess. And then burnish again. So keep doing this, basically, until, until you're happy with the results. You can apply more than one layer of gum tragacanth or tokenoldi if you want to. Um, normally, I don't think you really need to, uh, but you can. You can also sand in between, dye it again, and then apply more tokenoli if you want a perfect edge. Now, it depends a lot, uh, like I said before, on the type of leather that you use. If you use a lower quality that is softer and has a, a not as dense uh, leather that is a bit looser in the fibers, uh, you can want you might want to do uh, more than one pass of token only but you know it's it's a lot of work I instead think buy the nicer quality leather you don't need to buy the uh, the absolute best uh, the name brands for example if you don't want to but at least leather that isn't fussy on the sides uh, because then that will just be uh, a pain to deal with if you want rough edges Sure, go ahead. If you don't mind uh, to have edges that are really difficult to bevel and burnish, uh, by all means, buy the, the cheaper stuff. I have a lot of it. I use it for different things. 
uh, prototypes mainly or for things where the edges are not that important um, but it takes a long time so nicer quality leather is uh, oftentimes uh, much more enjoyable to work with basically There we go. Lovely burnished edges on the top part and on this uh, left part also. Now uh, we are going to um, we'll glue this and then sew it shut and then you are done with your nice new minimalist wallet. What you can do now is fold it, make sure that you're in the middle of this, um, this fold and start to gently push it together so that you are creating the edge or the, uh, the right shape of the wallet. If you just push down on it, that hole is basically non-existent. It looks a bit bigger now because there's dye on this inner side, uh, but it is a very, very small hole. And once we sew this shut and also cut off this edge, because we're going to, based on this round edge up here, that hole is going to disappear. So now just in the middle of this fold, start massaging the leather and try to push it shut or push it closed and fold it as much as you can and that will really make a difference later on. Just make sure that this bottom edge is still aligned properly so you might want to uh, keep it closed here and then keep folding it. Now that looks very nice. Now this edge might be a bit problematic because when you fold it closed the leather is still not, you know, because this um, sewing line is going to meet this one. And you might think that this part is a bit too long, but it really isn't. I've done plenty of these wallets and many times they look like this right now and it feels like it, it is a bit too long, this inner piece, uh, but it isn't. Once you have massaged this uh, fold closed, it's going to lie down nice and flat and it's going to look good. So just take this edge, this stitching line, and make it meet this line here. <coughs> there we go. Now, as we can see, it feels a bit too long, but once we massage it, and make it go into its proper shape, it looks lovely as it is. Now this bottom edge hasn't been dyed because it is going to be sanded so that all the edges are completely flush if they aren't when we sew it together 
and then it is going to uh, be beveled and burnished again. So we're going to dye this at a later stage. But look at that. Now it is really starting to look like a wallet. All right. Now we're in the final stages of making this wallet, which is quite nice. Uh, we're going to glue it together now. And how we want to glue it is quite simple. Uh, we have it like this. We want to glue this piece to that piece. So we're going to apply glue to either this piece here, like this, and then push it closed, and then this piece here, and then fold it over. Essentially, the only thing you need to glue on this piece is the bottom. Because here, it doesn't really matter if it's closed or not. It's actually quite good if it isn't glued closed, because then you have more room when you uh, put in your cards later on. So, essentially, you want to glue it closed here, and on this side here, so that this piece stays closed to that side. Why we're gluing is essentially because it is going to be easier for us to sew it, and also because it is not going to move anyway later on. You could just as well not glue this, but it is easier to sew it shut when it is really just stuck to each other, or to, to itself. So, when we apply this glue, the one that I have is from ROC, uh, leather glue. Uh, there are many types of glue. Uh, you can use whatever ones you want. Uh, for example, there's contact cement and other ones. This one is not that strong. <clears throat> and I like it because um, it isn't that toxic, doesn't smell too much, and it's quite simple to use. You don't need that much, whoops, a bit too much. <laughs> I just said it's super easy to use, then I messed up. Uh, but it's okay, most mistakes can be fixed, and this one doesn't matter. So, here we go, cleaning up. Now, once we have some glue on the leather, uh, I usually use uh, a scrap piece of leather and just spread it out. Uh, now, you don't want this to be too thick, and because I have too much glue here, I want to remove some. This is essentially too much. It is um, too far up on the leather. Uh, it's not that really big of a deal, because we can always remove more. And uh, the thing is, though, that if we have too much and too broad of a strand of leather uh, or glue, then it is going to be more difficult when we uh, push in the cards later on. We're going to break the glue inside anyways, uh, but... Um, it's just a hassle, and we don't really need that much. Now, this is more okay. What you want is to not have the glue too close to the edge, because then it's going to show, and we're not going to get a nice um, burnishing in the end. So, just apply some glue to the bottom. I would prefer to have maybe about five millimeters. So, basically, how broad this strip is, that it's that is basically how much glue you need. And uh, I had a bit too much here. To make sure that it doesn't touch the edge, but it's still close enough, so maybe one or two millimeters away from the edge is just fine. There we go. <coughs> so now we can fold this closed. Just make sure that the bottom is flush with the edge. There we go. And that you're in the middle of this fold. So just push that closed. Most important thing now uh, is that the bottom is as flush as it can be, because then we don't have to sand as much later on. Uh, if the holes aren't completely aligned, that's fine. We can work with that anyways. Now, since um, this piece is complete all the way up, it's longer than this piece, we're going to glue here, because then we run no risk of uh, going too far up, basically. Let's just apply some glue. We don't need that much, just some, 
to make it close. And like I said, not too close to the edges. There we go, that's fine. So make sure that you don't have any glue on your fingers because that might stick to the leather and um, it's going to be very difficult to get off. Now, just fold this over and like before, make sure that the bottom edge is as flush as it can be. And here, it is also very important that your stitching line, they meet. We're going to make sure that they do with uh, a few needles that we're going to push into through the holes. So the bottom, as flush as it can be, run your finger along it to make sure that it is. And then also make sure that the lines, the stitching lines, they align. Now, <coughs> once we have the glue applied, you can take a needle, for example, and push it through on certain points. I tend to push it through one here, one at the end, and one up top. And then that stays, so there we go, that's one hole. Now here also, you want to make sure that you can't really see the glue. So if you have taken a bit too much, or if it has moved a bit, just open it. Take a uh, cloth or something. Wipe it off, make sure that you do this when it is still, uh, still wet, because otherwise you can, uh, you're going to see it later on. There we go, much better. Don't worry if this uh, edge isn't completely flat, it is going to flatten down later on anyways when you use it. So you don't need to glue this bit completely closed. Yeah, if it's fine, it's fine and it's good if there's some glue, <clears throat> but otherwise it's going to fold naturally uh, once it is used more and more. So now that we have it pushed down a bit, needle into one of the holes, find a stitching hole and then push it through to the other side. There we go. Now we have added some needles to the holes and it's okay if they're not completely aligned. As we can see, these ones definitely aren't. Uh, this is one of the, the worst cases I've seen. I've made quite a few of these wallets and uh, even if the needles aren't completely straight, it's fine. Um, we can still sew it closed. Just make sure that it looks okay and um, because later on, um, we can still sew it closed even if the needles are a bit wonky. It just takes a bit longer, but you can still find the holes. Now, once you have the, uh, the needles in, you can just apply some clamps. And uh, especially in this corner, you can press down a bit and make sure that this hole uh, or this uh, corner uh, is a bit more closed than the rest. Because that is going to look uh, better off later on. So, apply some clamps and then let the glue dry and then it is time for the second to last part uh, which is sewing the case or the, the wallet closed. So leave it like this and then we're going to sew it closed. Here we go. The wallet is now so closed, so closed. And uh, what we have left to do is cut off this corner and bevel and burnish the, uh, the bottom edge. As we can see, this uh, corner here isn't, isn't properly aligned, which is okay. Uh, we're going to take a, um, a Dremel and sand down the, uh, the bottom edge so that it is perfectly flush. If you want to, you can also cut small pieces off until it is <coughs> perfectly aligned. And as we can see, uh, 
the coin that we used before to make the, uh, the edge can also be used to cut off this edge if you want to. So that works just fine. Um, so just cut off this edge, bevel and burnish, and then you are done. What you can do, uh, now that it is sewn closed, you can take a bone folder or a wooden butter knife or something like it and just push it into the, uh, the wallet and break any glue that is left behind. It doesn't seem like there is on this fold. Let's do the back as well. There's some. So just break that inside. And then you can try and put a card in just for that feel. Look at that. Very nice. So we'll go back, cut the corner, bevel and burnish the edge, and uh, then we are done. Here the bottom is again, that is now sanded down. It is much more flush and we have a uh, clear uh, edge at the bottom now that is much better looking. So now the only thing left is that we're going to continue our uh, bevel where we left off last time uh, that we beveled this side. We'll continue doing that up and then down again. And uh, after that, we're going to uh, do the same burnishing as we did before. Water, then uh, we're going to dye it, and then we're going to apply the token only as well. And then the wallet is done. Okay, uh, the bottom has now been beveled, and we're going to burnish it. Like before, apply some water, not too much. Just to darken the leather a bit. There we go. And now we burnish. Now it depends on a bit on how smooth you want this to be. Uh, but like I said before, if you want to, after you have done uh, with burnish with the water, you can also take some 1,000, 2,000 grit sandpaper and um, rub it along there and then burnish again some more. Uh, it also depends on the leather that you use. Give some extra attention to the, to the corners. Now this looks nice and shiny already. feels very smooth, so I'll just take some uh, dye and uh, dye this and then apply some token only. Be careful when you apply the dye set that you don't get it on the, uh, the thread. Otherwise, just put it on there. Nice. We'll let this dry for a bit, and then uh, go over it once again with the burnisher, and then the final stage to apply the token oil. There we go. Now that the bottom edge is beveled and burnished, uh, we're all done. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me make this uh, minimalist leather wallet. Uh, and if you're interested in making one of these yourself, uh, you can find the pattern and the instructions in the link below for my Etsy shop. Uh, 
As I said, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you have any questions about making a wallet like this or if there's anything in the video that wasn't clear enough, uh, send me a message either on YouTube or via Etsy or via my email, uh, which is also linked below. Uh, thank you for watching. Bye.